Good morning, everybody. It's Chris from Team Aquascape. Myself and the rest of the gang are out here to tear apart this pond and recreate this thing into a magical wreck pond out in this beautiful suburban backyard. Let's go! So, so as you can see, we have an existing ecosystem pond. I just turned the power off, so the waterfalls is not running, but it's a pretty nice pond. You know, it was done by another local contractor in here. However, after the customers discovered our videos and much like what you guys are watching out there, they realized that it left a little bit to be desired and they really wanted to make it bigger, deeper, and have a lot more interactivity in it. So we're gonna rip out this entire pond and go ahead and redesign the entire thing. Brian will be out here in a little bit to explain the design to you and his thought process when doing so. So first steps for us is going to be to drain the pond, get all the fish out, put them in some collapsible tanks. We'll do that, locate those tanks somewhere over there and then start ripping all of the rock and gravel out of there. So we will reuse a majority, if not all of this stone. The patio will stay and the fire pit will stay, but we're gonna go ahead and redesign the space. We may have to pop out a couple trees temporarily that look like they have just recently been planted. So we shouldn't see too much transplant shock with those and it being cooler temps out here now that it is the fall as you can see we've got some mums as well as some pumpkins and stuff over here i think we should be good we've got some beautiful weather ahead you can see the guys over here bringing in the collapsible tubs like i said we'll get that pond drained and then start demoing the pond So it's already looking quite different with a majority of the perennials and shrubs coming out. The next step is going to be demoing the entire pond. We're gonna demo this whole backside from the top down and just start placing all the cobbles and boulders and gravel up onto that patio. You can see we've got it protected with some of our plastic mats. That will help dramatically with clean up when we're at the end of the job. And we don't wanna damage any of the pavers that are underneath, but it allows us to keep this material nice and close, but also allows us to really minimize the amount of cleanup that we have as well. So definitely pays dividends to do your due diligence and do all that stuff first. a little bit different of a vantage point. We've got the entire pond ripped apart as you can see. Corey is taking the last of the fabric and getting it out of here. Brian is here. You can see there's some paint marks on the ground. I'm going to turn the camera over back to him and he's going to walk you through the design and kind of his thought process when designing this feature and we are completely taking over the backyard, B. <laughs> it's kind of, I mean, this was a project sold well over a year ago and some things have changed back here. They put in a patio, they've added some trees and so we're just kind of adept and uh, like we always do we'll just make it incredible so let me show you guys the design hopefully we get their approval on it it's not too much off from what we talked about last time but uh, a little different here we go so like always view from inside is king they've got this great patio it's covered in fabric right now just to protect it and keep all the mud off of it but we're going to do an upper pool right in this area i want to get a waterfall probably about that high dropping into it facing towards this addition they put on over in here the sunroom area and towards the family room over in there and then more importantly, when sitting out here, sitting, laying, sleeping, <laughs> they'll, they'll get to hang out by this waterfall. So nice big waterfall coming towards the house. You guys can't see, but there's a significant grade change from here down to there. So this is truly an upper pool. It's gonna overflow right here through a waterfall coming down. And so as I take this pathway right in here, there'll be a bridge. You'll look back and you'll see that waterfall. The pathway kind of meanders this way. Right in here will be a giant boulder wall holding back all the soil that will come up to create the berm for this big waterfall here. That boulder wall will outline the pathway so a very cool feeling as you're walking down the pathway to have this big three foot boulder wall flanking on your left side here. The pathway is going to lead to a secret garden area back behind the berm from the waterfall. So just kind of this quiet meditation space back in there. If you come down a little bit further the pathway makes a split right here. This split will take you across Across the intake bay that sits in here which will have a skimmer vault aqua blocks blah 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 we'll get into that later through another bridge that takes you over to an addition onto the existing fire pit patio sitting over here that addition is necessary because I want a 
designated area for fish feeding, sitting and hanging out by the pond, different from the fire pit area over there. The pond will be about three to four feet deep. It'll definitely be four feet deep in a spot, but we're gonna do our wall stone inside the pond right in here so we can go straight down and then the fish can come right up in there and they wanna turn it into, you know, a little bit of a rec pond over in that space. The pond comes over into here. We get this one waterfall that we talked about earlier dropping underneath this bridge. Then there'll be another one as it enters into the pond over in here. So we have a decent sized pond. I haven't measured it. It looks like 32 and a half feet <laughs> by 16 and three quarters. This way, that way. Pond will come over into here. We've shrunk this section of the pond down, but what we're gonna do here is turn this into more of a deep stream and over to a group of spheres that they can see better from the patio, give them sound by the patio. The height of those spheres will give this a little bit more of an intimate feeling over here. More importantly, views from inside the office window over there. So it's day one. Hopefully you guys can see it the same way we can. <laughs> Nobody sees it yeah. the way you can. <laughs> I guess that's it for the day. <laughs> All right, well, Jack's done. As you can see, we've got uh, some weather heading our way. We made decent progress today. We got the entire pond demoed, which was huge. We got all the grass stripped out that we needed to. We got everything covered up. Looks like the next couple of days are gonna be rain. So since Jack's done, let's go see what the guys are kind of gonna button up. Luis, what do you think? Rain. I know, again, oh my God. again. All right, so good. So we are not electricians, guys and girls out there, but we sure as heck love to dig and uh, that's what we're doing. So we are running a new conduit for the electrician because what we needed was really much different than the temporary electric that they had ran off of that. And it kind of was a weird, I don't know what it was, but whoever did it didn't know what the heck they were doing. So we're doing it the right way. We're putting conduit in, taking it from over by the box or the meter rather. We're gonna run it all the way down and around and get power back over to where you see that little piece of pipe stubbed up over there. That's the backside of our intake bay. That's about seven, eight feet from it. So that's where we're gonna need power to power the pumps that will sit in there. So the weather does not look so good for the rest of of the day so i think what we're going to do is we're going to kind of wrap that up and then uh i think just call it a day unfortunately go back to the shop do some equipment maintenance button up some stuff that way but i don't think we're going to get out of it and it doesn't make sense to make a huge mess out here and only make it worse for ourselves when we're going to be out here for seven eight ten days so a couple hours shy of a full day isn't going to make or break us we'll just have to make it up on the flip side this is a very impromptu an interruption to your video brian helfrich and myself are excited to announce the aquascape hands-on academy and this is the hands-on area right here. This was originally created for the Sandbox Studio for the Aquascape Artists of the Year, but it's gonna be turned into a training academy for all people that wanna be contractors to come and learn with our crew. You're gonna see Chris, our crew, and how they build a one-day pond, and we're gonna show you how to do it in four hours. We're gonna have bleachers over here. People are gonna be able to get inside, get their hands dirty. Besides the 11 by 16 or eight by 11, whatever yep. we decide to do for the one-day pond, we're also gonna put in fountainscapes and a pondless waterfall. Come to the Aquascape Hands-On Training Academy this winter and work with us in a sandbox actually getting your hands dirty and learning how to have a career with water feeds. Don't you want to tell them about the other day? It's two days! The classroom day! <laughs> One day is going to be hands-on in the sandbox, the other day is going to be how to actually run a water feature business. Everything you need to know, 30 years of experience, 26 years at the home, building water features, designing water features, selling water features, marketing water features, promoting water features, everything to do with running a water feature oh, business. You, you said a lot in a short amount of time. We're going to have yeah. a lot in two days. <laughs> Register, check out the link below. And now, back to the vlog. All right, the torrential rains that we had yesterday, we've got some standing water. This is all clay. This is very typical of newer subdivisions where they throw down like four inches of black dirt and then it's all clay underneath. So not a lot of infiltration of that water into the soil layer. So what we're gonna do is a couple things. One is we're gonna get go ahead and get our biofalls set, which is gonna set right over there. We're gonna reuse the existing biofalls from this project. We're gonna put some new bulkhead fittings on just to ensure, I guess, the functionality, the integrity of those bulkhead fittings. Luis and Corey are going to work on that. I'm going to go ahead and just start digging this dirt from the pond and throwing it back up over here. And so we can create our berm. Jack and Dan are going to work on dropping in some big 36 inch boulders on that back side to retain the soil. We'll come about a foot away from that fence and then that'll give me a place to pile up the dirt as we start excavating the pond. So this is the pond.
pond shape, right? We're gonna go to about there with the pond. We'll have to dig all this area out. We're gonna go down four feet with this. Um, a majority of the pond is going to be three feet deep with the exception of our intake bay area over there. So we have an enormous amount of soil that's going to come out right now. There's only probably about two foot of depth in this area. There's maybe a three foot section down there. We'll have to check. I'm gonna set up the transit, establish elevations, all that good stuff that you are familiar with in our videos. But the goal of the day is get the pond dug, hopefully get the liner in and hopefully the rain will hold off. We'll get our biofall sets, get our retaining wall built so that tomorrow, if we get liner in, we can start rocking this pond. Thank you.